what's going on YouTube this is the common sense professor and today we're going to be looking at creating our first HMI program for Alan Bradley's HMI screens this is going to be a really simple program but it's going to help us to get started with building these programs little at a time so for the software that we use for this is called factor talk view studio now you can actually go into factor talk view studio with studio 5000 now which is an improvement. I've always said that it seems like Alan Bradley had different software engineers for the different programs and didn't really communicate with each other because they're so separate from each other, but they're they're getting better at it. So when you open up Studio 5000, there is a way to get into Factor Talk that way, but we're just going to open up Factor Talk View Studio from the actual program. So when it opens, the first thing it wants us to do is if it wants to know if we want to open an existing program, and some of these existing programs are examples that came with the program, or create new. And we're going to choose create new. So we're just going to name this. Now the next thing that we need to do is choose a resolution. You see here that if you, you have a, a PV plus 700 or 1000, then this is obviously the resolution that you'll use, but you need to match whatever you're using. And so for this, we're going to choose the 1280 1024 because we're going to be using our computer screen for an HMI. So we hit create. Okay, this is a long process. So we finally have the program ready to create at this point. And you can see it looks kind of similar over here, this, this Explorer section to the Studio 5000 controller organizer, but we have a lot more options here. This is a really intuitive program. It's not exactly user friendly. So we're gonna step through this. That's why we're starting off small. We're gonna kind of build as we go. Now, in the background here, I've already got a program running on my PLC, just a real simple start-stop program using latch and unlatch. And what we're going to do is we're going to operate this using our factory talk HMI. So the very first thing that we have to do is we have to establish a communication because we want to pull these tags inside our program into our HMI. So I could have these as base tags and then this actually going out to my output and controlling a motor. Either way is fine, but just for this example, we just have three tags, start, stop, and run, and they're all base tags. So in order to pull those in, I have to communicate with my factory talk program to my PLC to pull those tags in. So the first thing that you need to do with that is you need to establish a communication. So at the very bottom you see factory talk links. You're going to click on that and you're going to go to this communication setup. When you double click that, you're going to create a new configuration just like we would in RS links basically, but what we're doing is we're going to pull in that network that we've already established in RS links and then create a shortcut for our HMI. So let's go through and let's find it first. So my PLC is 172.19.18.71 and you can see in slot 6 I've got an L81 card. So let's go find that. Open up my Ethernet here and it pulls in all the addresses that I've already created with RS links, Ethernet IP. So here is my 71. If I expand that, expand my backplane, here is my channel 6 CPU card. Now this is where I want to communicate with this program to pull those tags in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new shortcut. I'll just call this PLC 71. Once I create that, I'm going to come over here to my 71 highlight this, see how that's still in gray, and I want to hit apply. It's going to say, are you sure that you want to do this? And yes, we want to create that shortcut. Now there's been a shortcut created now, but there's one more thing we have to do before we do this. This is our local. If we want to create a runtime target, and I can do that manually as well, just like I did before, but it's going to be the same address. So all I'm going to do is hit this copy from design to runtime. And this is what you're going to do most of the time whenever you create these HMI communications. Now that I've got both communications established, I'm just going to hit OK. And we've established that communication. So that's the first step that we need to do. Just like our PLC program, where we want to program is kind of hidden. It's under this graphics. That's what It's not very user friendly at all. If we open up this graphics under displays, we see our main displays that we're going to program from. Now the information, diagnostics, and alarm are pre-made. That way if you have an issue on your screen, it's going to bring up an alarm screen over your main screen. So I generally leave those 
but where we're going to do our programming at is in our main screen here. So when I double click that, it pulls up this main screen. Now let me just first begin by saying that if you want to change the background, and it's always a good idea, in my opinion, to change a white background to a darker color, depending on your system, but all you have to do is go to display settings, and once you're in display settings, you go to the background color here, and you can choose a darker color, and it changes the color of your background at that point. First thing we want to do is we want to add our start button here. So if we go up to our objects, we have several options here. Notice we have a push button option. Now under this push button option, we have momentary, maintain, latch, multi-state. We have a bunch of different options. All we need is just a momentary push button for our start. So we select that and notice we have an option here to when we click it, we can bring it down to however large we want to make it. And once we release that, it automatically opens up our properties screen. Now you can do a bunch of different things here. You can make it normally open, normally closed, or just a certain value. You can do raised sides, uh, highlight color, order width. You can change all that. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to go into states. Now when we get into states, basically there's your off state when it's not pushed, your on state, and then your error state. Okay, we're not going to mess with the error state. But our off state is what it is all the time when it's not being pushed. And so for our start, let's make that a green color. And then our caption here, we can change our format of our font, make it bold, different colors. But let's just call it start. And let's make it a little bigger. So let's make it 22 and bold. Now you can also at this point make it blink and do different things. I mean, there's, there's just a lot of things that you can mess with this. We're just going to go over just the, the main items for this. Now we established state 0. We're going to go to state 1 now because state 1 is what happens whenever it's pushed. And we'll see this. So let's, let's change the colors up so we can actually see this. Let's change this to, um, let's just say a yellow for instance. All right, and then for this, let's change that to start it. Okay, and then we'll make that 22 in bold. And let's make this blink. So when it's just there in state zero, it's green with a white start. Once I push it, it turns yellow and it should blink. Now, at this point, if I just hit apply here, watch what happens, and I'll go back into this. It shows my, my push button or my state one state because I have the highlighted. So if we keep it on state zero, whenever we're finished here, it'll go back green and show us what it looks like when it's not pressed. Now, the other thing that we need to do is establish our communication with that start tag. So we have to go find it. So when you go here under values, you're going to click this little tag icon, and it's going to bring up your first HMI program. But at this point, it doesn't actually bring up your tags. So we're going to refresh all folders. Okay, now be patient because this takes a while sometimes. But now you see our PLC 71 here. If we expand that, go online and expand that. And one more time, here's our main program inside that PLC 71. There's our tags. So now you see our start, stop, and run. So we're going to select the start tag, hit OK. Now we're actually pointing this button when we push it to that start tag in our side of our PLC. So we'll hit OK. Now we're going to do the same thing for our stop. Now I'm going to come up here again and go to objects and select our push button just like I did before, but I want that to be the same size. So if I just right click this, go to copy, and then I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to bring this aside here like this. Now I just double click and I'm going to change this to my stop. So I'm going to go to my states, state zero, let's make this red for stop. And we'll call this stop. Whoops, having a hard time typing today. Call that stop. All right, now I'll go to state one for when we actually press it. We'll keep it blinking. We'll change this to stopped. And let's I don't know, let's make this blue. 
whenever we push it just to show a difference there. Now let's go to connections. We already have our start because we copied the other one, but we want to change that to stop. So we hit OK. Hit OK again. Notice how that is blue and it says stopped. The reason for that is because I left this on state 1. So I'm going to change that back to state 0. There we go. Now we have our start and our stop buttons. Now the only thing we need is a light down here, an indicator telling us when our motor is running. So if we go back up to objects and we go to indicator, we're going to choose a multi-state indicator even though we're only going to use two states at the bottom here. Now again it automatically brings up our properties. Now if you notice we have three states. We only need two off and on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete state 2 and state 3. Now state 0 I'm going to say not running. State 0 means off and we'll just keep that blue. State 1 let's say running and let's go ahead and make that blink and let's change our colors. Let's go with kind of a, a dark red color there. Now we're going to do the same thing with our connections with this. We're going to click the tag to the front and then we're going to choose run and then hit OK. There's our run tag. We hit OK. Alright so now let's minimize this. Let's bring this down and let's minimize our POC program so we can watch it operate because what we're going to do at this point we're not going to create a runtime or anything with this video we'll do that in the future at this point we just want to see it operate so here's my start and stop okay and I'm going to come over here to the left and hit play we're going to test our display now again this is running now let me hit start you notice that you didn't actually see it being pushed but it's latched in let's hit stop let's hit start again okay and that's how HMIs work that's the basics of our HMI programming now let's watch this go from not running to running Okay, so again, this is the first of many videos that we're going to build up on HMI programming, but this is the simplest program that we're going to have, and we're just going to stop here because we did a lot with this program with establishing communications, bringing in our tags, and then actually programming an HMI that controls the PLC. I hope this helps, and look forward to having you in future videos.